It's been a year since I got a Supernote A6X, and in that time I've gone fully paperless with my note taking and productivity. While there are definitely some things I enjoyed in spite of, this device has become an indispensable part of my daily workflow. I won't really be talking about the technical specs in this review, instead about why I chose this over the competition, my experience with using it daily, and the things I think could be improved. I'll also touch on what we know about the future of the platform. I don't think it's possible to give an honest review without touching on the price. E-ink tablets are pretty expensive. In 2022, why would you spend over $400 on a black and white tablet that can't run many apps well? So right off the bat, please don't consider this positive review as me saying you absolutely need to buy this tablet if you feel you can't afford it. E-ink tablets are still relatively niche, and so for the moment are priced higher than regular tablets and I want to acknowledge that. Now what makes this purchase worth it for me personally is that it does one thing a regular tablet could never do, which is let me go paperless without staring at yet another LED screen. I did want to shift from using paper notebooks and paper planners, but I wanted to do so without making my eyes as tired as I find they get from regular screens. After some research, I narrowed it down to three main options, the Remarkable, the Books, and the Supernote. I live in a country Remarkable doesn't ship to, so the costs for me were about the same, and I was mainly choosing based on the features. When it came to the Remarkable, I just felt it didn't have enough features on top of being a notebook replacement, especially for the price. To access some features that I felt were essential, it did bother me that I would have to install third-party hacks and kind of cross my fingers that they worked after every update. I also don't really enjoy writing in pencil, so that famous writing feel was not a selling point for me. Again, this was about a year ago, so this was before Remarkable introduced Connect, which I would definitely take into account if I was buying a Remarkable in 2022. As for books, I actually do have a books device, which I still use for casual reading using multiple platforms. Based on my experience with it and all the research I did on the note-taking experience on books devices, I just felt for this particular purpose, I wanted something that was less a regular tablet with an e-ink screen on top. I wanted something more focused, more intentional, and honestly something with an overall smoother user experience. The backlight was not a factor for me since I was coming from paper, and any situation I would take notes on paper, I definitely have light around. Being able to use different apps was also not my priority. I didn't need one device to do it all if I could find a device to do what I wanted but exceptionally well. I looked more into the features of the Supernote and thought it was a device that was more specialized for note taking. It has features like titles which let you make a table of contents for your notebooks, and I liked that the writing feel was more like pen to paper. The company also seemed very transparent, responsive, and focused on developing new features geared towards the type of user I am, so I decided on the Supernote as the best fit for me. Now when it came to deciding on size, even a year ago the A5X was definitely more popular, and that made me want to be extra sure that I wouldn't regret getting an A6X. Well, after a year, I can truthfully say that I don't regret the size at all. Maybe it's my build or my preference for smaller devices, but I find it very convenient and it doesn't take up too much space on my desk, so I can easily use it alongside a laptop for work calls and online courses. But of course, this is totally personal preference. So here was my basic three-step process to decide. First, I measured out on paper the size of the device and the screen. And I know it sounds really silly, but it helped me get perspective on how big of a space I actually would have to write on. I was also really clear to myself about what I was going to do with this device. Even though reading on it is nice, I read mainly EPUB so the text can adjust to any screen size, and I knew I was mostly going to use it for planning and note-taking. That led to the third thing. I knew I was replacing functions I was already using paper notebooks for, so I simply compared to what I was already using, and found it similar enough in size to make me comfortable with my decision. I do have a video comparing the A6X to some common paper notebook sizes, which I'll link below. I really hope it helps you if you're stuck deciding, and to anyone watching this who is also happy with their A6X, I hope this made you feel a bit less alone. When it comes to pens, right now I have three pens, two ceramic and one Lamy. If you must have scratchy pencil on paper feel, you'll probably dislike the writing feel of the Supernote. I prefer gel pens and fountain pens, so I really enjoy it. The screen protector is pretty unique in that it lets your pen dig into something. It's smooth, but not glassy. And I think that's probably the closest you can get on any tablet, not just e-ink, to that pen on paper feel. 
The default pen is a nice weight, though for how I hold pens, I found it a bit uncomfortable over long periods of time, since the ridge is where I tend to hold the pen. I do like how the ceramic nib is very precise, really fine, and how it digs in a bit more into the screen film. But lately, I've been using the Lamy more regularly, despite the fact that it's smoother and less grippy because of the very comfortable pen body and how convenient I find the eraser, which can be triggered one-handed. On the general user experience, to be blunt, I found this device much easier to pick up and start using compared to my books device. For the most part, options are clearly labeled, the icons make sense, and the manual is right on your device so you can consult it anytime. In the past year, I've also seen this device get several firmware updates, some of them adding major features or performance improvements. If I was shooting this review just a few months ago, I would have included the cons that the device was a little slow, that the Kindle app was not pleasant to use, and that viewing PDFs didn't have landscape mode. But the last firmware update and the upcoming firmware update address all those issues. The fact that Supernote is so responsive has made the past year of ownership a pretty smooth one. This part may not be pertinent to everyone, but since I use this for note-taking for work, I wanted to be really careful with my information. It was very important to me to be able to use features offline and get my files on and off the device as easily and straightforwardly as possible. So it's a big plus to me that the file management is very simple, you can basically treat it like a USB, and even back it up directly to a USB. This one device has replaced all the meeting notebooks, project notes, and random pads of paper that I used to keep on my desk. These are literally the notebooks and things that I was using right before I made the switch, and I've had to bring them out of storage to make these videos since I haven't really used them since I got my super note. I've moved basically all I used to do with paper over to this device, and I find that I'm actually much more organized nowadays. Even just being able to resize what you've written with pen and paper and copy and paste things was an unexpected game changer if you're like me and coming from regular pen and paper. One of the reasons I wanted to switch from paper was that I found I sometimes had a difficult time looking for specific notes in my little stack of different notebooks. I'd also sometimes scribble down something on the nearest sheet of paper and then misplace that paper and misplace that thought. I find the Supernote, just by virtue of having features geared towards making your notes and documents easier to navigate, addresses both of these problems for me. I use features like title, stars, keywords, and quick access every day, and they've become indispensable to me for finding the notes and information that I need. If you either want more detail on how exactly I use these features in my workflow, or if you want more detail on how to go about using these features in general, I'll link to my videos on both these topics below. These features do not, at the moment, include full text search. If this is a must-have feature for you right now, be prepared to either wait or look at other options. For reading, I have a pretty old Kindle and the Poke 3 that I mentioned earlier. I mostly read books while lounging around in bed and find the smaller size the most comfortable to hold at weird angles, and also the least painful to drop on my face when I'm sleepy. In the past year, I found myself using the Super Note for what I guess you could call more intensive reading. For studying, for example. It has come in really handy for things like studying another language. The ability to give myself big margins to write on books and the digest function to combine different excerpts has helped me a lot. A benefit I didn't really expect was I found myself printing things out way less often with this device. I write and have to review a lot of text for work and think the proofreading function on the Supernote is totally underappreciated or at least not talked about enough. As someone who finds it easier to spot typos and other small errors on a printed page, it's pretty refreshing to be able to directly make corrections to a Word file in an analog way. I also use it instead of printing documents for different hobbies and interests, since if a template doesn't exist, you can very easily make or adapt your own. Even though I use my Supernote every day and have come to rely on it for my workflow, I don't really use or enjoy every feature. The calendar function is one I don't find very useful. I was actually really excited about this feature, but the way it integrates notes is not useful to me right now. It shows you your notes based on when they're last opened, rather than staying on the date that they're made. I find this pretty confusing, so I just use a PDF planner for keeping my notes by date. I've also seen people reporting bugs when syncing their calendars, so I wouldn't consider this feature a selling point right now, and I don't even keep it on my sidebar. 
This next one is more a limitation of this particular review. I don't use the email function on the super notes, so I can't really review it. Again, I try to keep this offline for work reasons, and I also try to keep my emails contained to my laptop, but that's a whole other conversation about digital minimalism. When it comes to PDFs, there are two limitations which I think will make this harder to use if you handle a lot of full-size PDFs in your workflow. I mostly use the digest function, but for some Word documents, I would prefer highlighting on preview so I could easily extract or annotate highlights when I get to a computer. Right now, the highlights are treated just like regular writing. PDF navigation is also something that could be improved. I know that landscape mode is coming soon, but I would also like to see more steps in Zoom than 50% at a time. The languages officially supported right now are English, Japanese, and Chinese. Although I find it can accurately convert words in other languages as long as they're written using the Roman alphabet. The catch is support for accents and different keyboards is still lacking. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons I got the Supernote is I really appreciate the vision of the company and the commitment to focus on firmware updates over releasing devices very often. So a lot of the issues that I just mentioned are actually also mentioned in the roadmap as things to fix or improve. I'll link to the most recent version of the roadmap below. Of the planned features, I think the ones which will be the most game-changing for my own workflow are links and notes and the conversion of notes into text, specifically conversion into or support for Markdown, which would better let me integrate my handwritten notes with platforms like Obsidian. Now to be clear, I don't believe in buying a device on the expectation of future features. But I'm also not going to lie and say that knowing these features are in development isn't a pretty nice plus for me as a Supernote owner. I hope you enjoyed this review. Here's another video on the Supernote you might like. Stay tuned to my channel for more videos on the Supernote. Thanks for watching.